What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're working on the Corolla again and we're gonna be replacing the inner tie rods. Let's get started. To begin, you wanna make sure you're in first gear if it's a standard or park if it's an automatic. Obviously, pull the handbrake up and for some extra protection, you can always chalk off the rear wheels. Next, let's jack up the car. So I'm gonna support it right here on the pinch rail or, well, you know, whatever's left over of it. Um, anyway, and then I'm gonna put the jack stand right underneath the frame rail, but I'll show you that in a second. I'm actually going to put the jack stand right here on this uh, control arm where it meets the body. It's a pretty sturdy point and that's where I have the most room to put it currently. Okay, now that it's safely raised and supported, what you want to do is remove your lug nuts. That's with a 21 millimeter socket. Okay, so next in order to make things easier to get more access to the inner tie rod, you're going to want to turn this, make sure you have your key in the ignition, that way the steering wheel doesn't lock. There we go. That gives us a little bit more room, and now we can undo this cotter pin right here. Sometimes they come out by hand, sometimes they don't. And if yours does break, you can just cut it flush with the nut, and then once you take the nut off um, with an impact or whatever you might have, you can usually just drill it out because these are soft metal. Make sure you replace these. Um, this one is in decent condition. I recently replaced the outer tie rods, so I'm going to reuse it, but if it were in bad condition, I would replace it. All right, so before you go any further, you want to break this jam nut free. This is going to be a 22 millimeter, um, although I'm not sure if it's going to be the same for you because I already have um, aftermarket inner outer tie rods in here. For me, it's a 22 millimeter. For you, it may or may not be the same. There we go. You could also use some large pliers, locking pliers, whatever you have. Sometimes these get really stuck on here. So um, if it doesn't want to come off, you could try heating it. You could try spraying it with a lot of rust penetrant. Hopefully it comes off. If not, uh, maybe you can just cut the nut, cut the tie rod, just do whatever you have to do, but you need to get these two separated. Next we're going to take a 19 millimeter socket. I already have aftermarket tie rods here, or outer tie rods I mean. So for you this nut size might be different, but for me it's 19. So whatever yours is, just take it off. All right, now you can go about this different ways. Uh, you can either get a tie rod separator, and basically what that does is it pushes on the stud gently and clamps onto the knuckle, pushes the stud up. Or if you're replacing the outer tie rod, just go nuts on it. I'm not replacing the outer tie rod because it's still good, so I'm just going to hammer on the knuckle and the vibrations will break the stud free from the knuckle. There we go. Next, what you want to do is take your tie rods and then you want to undo the outer tie rod but count the number of threads that it takes. A lot of times it's not going to be perfectly accurate when you put it back the same amount of, the same number of threads but it's gonna get you close enough to uh, get down to the local alignment shop and get your alignment done. All right, so it took 19 turns for me. I'm gonna remember that or write it down somewhere, but 19 turns on the passenger side. Next, what you wanna do is grab some pliers and undo this clamp right here. It seems like I'm able to do it by hand, so I must be getting weak. All right, so hopefully you can see this decently well. This is your bellows boot right here. That's your steering rack. This is where it mounts, and right here, you have a clamp that holds the bellows boot to the steering rack to seal it up from water and debris. And in my case, I have a weird looking clamp that has a screw on it that tightens and loosens. You might have one that is a single use clamp, or you might just have a zip tie if someone has already replaced these. Um, so whatever it is, take it off. If it's a zip tie, cut it. If it's a single use clamp that basically just pinches down, you want to use a pry bar and uh, break it off of there or cut it or do whatever you have to do. And if it's this, I guess unscrew it and hopefully it comes off. If not, just break it because we're going to use a zip tie at the end. All right, so as you can see, I was able to uh, bend it. The screw was stripped so I couldn't unscrew it. I just bent it, broke it, and I was able to pull it off. There you go. Now you want to just pull it off the rest of the way. Oh, <laughs> you know what I forgot? We got to take this nut off. Otherwise, the boot won't come off. All right, so there are multiple ways you can do this. Obviously, you can either cut it, cut the tie rod. If it's frozen, in my case, it's actually pretty free. So I'm just gonna spin it off by hand, but uh, basically just, you wanna get rid of it so you can save your bellows boot. If you are reusing, if you're not reusing your bellows boot, obviously you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to replace anything. You don't have to take this nut off. You can just take the tie rod off. There we go. And 
and I'll just give it a good pull. And there we go, should slide off. Take this, take this clamp off, inspect it. If it's not torn, this is just, this is not broken, it's just uh, squeezed. If it's not torn, we're good to reuse it. One thing I wanna mention right now is if you happen to notice any fluid coming out of the steering rack right there where you see the seal, that is a bad sign actually. That's a sign of a leaking steering rack. You might wanna get that replaced before it's too late and completely blows and you lose power steering. So uh, just keep an eye out on that. Other than that, let's keep going. All right, so if you look closely in there, you can see that there's this little shim. This has This is supposed to have two corners bent over this tie rod to lock it in. Looks like the previous person that replaced this did not uh, bend these over. And really it's just a safety thing because this will prevent the inner tie rod from unlocking itself. You can use thread locker if you'd like and that'll hold it, but this is just an extra uh, physical protection measure basically. So if in your case these any of these are bent over on this hex part, you want to take a screwdriver and a hammer or something and basically unbend them, straighten them out so that the tie rod can spin. And if it's not bent over like mine is, I guess just uh, continue with the removal. All right, so the next challenge is to remove this part from the steering rack. What you wanna use is either a tool like this that clamps on, or they make special inner tie rod removal tools that you can rent from your local auto parts store. And those just basically slide on, it's like a big tube, and it has a wrench end, slides over this because it's got a hex cutout and you can just undo it. I'm gonna choose to go this route. Now, if you want to buy this tool, I'll link it down in the description from where you can uh, purchase it, as well as all other parts. All other parts and tools that I use in this video are gonna be linked in the description for you. So you wanna center this on this inner tie rod portion. Then we're gonna snug up these nuts. Right. So you wanna make these tight so that these uh, grippy arms can, can grip well into the tie rod as you break it free because it's gonna be pretty tight in there. All right, now that your tool is fully tightened in there, what you wanna do is get yourself an extension on a 3 8 ratchet. My ratchet actually extends to give me more leverage. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and then put it on the loosen setting and just give it a, give it a quick pull and it should break free. <laughs> All right, so the 3 8 ratchet was not enough for me to break that loose. Apparently it's super tight. So what I did is I put a, a 3 8 to half inch adapter on the end of two long extensions and my half inch breaker bar. Let's give this a try. There we go. All right, so now you wanna just spin this out. You wanna make sure that when you do this, you don't force the, uh, the rack to spin. You wanna do sudden jerky movements on this uh, inner tie rod because you want to pulsate to break it free. You don't want to try to spin this rack because you can cause internal damage and uh, potentially ruin this uh, seal at the end here. So just make sure how much pressure you put on it and uh, focus on mainly basically jerking this free in an impacting motion. All right, next you want to remove these two nuts just to free your tool off of here. And this should come right off. Here is the uh, this locking clip. Um, I actually tried to bend it the other way after I tried to use my 3 8 ratchet and uh, because I thought it was bent and I just didn't see it. Turns out it wasn't bent. It was just super tight because it took a good amount of force even with the half inch breaker bar. So again, I'm gonna link new tie rods in the description. They should come if you buy the ones I have uh, with the locking clip and you wanna put that on before you install anything. And uh, at the end, we're gonna have to uh, basically bend it over onto these little slots right here. If you notice right here, it's actually not greased yet, but it does come with a pack of grease that you can insert. And we're gonna do that after we install it in the car because you can try to spin this, but it's gonna be very, very difficult to break this loose at this point when it's not mounted. Now, as we get ready to put the new tie rod in, you can see these two little grooves. These two grooves is exactly where these two tabs will lock into once the ring is up against the rack. So have it ready on the tie rod. I'm not putting any thread locker on it because I'm going to bend the ears over on the ring, on the locking clip and uh, on the locking ring. And I'm gonna lock it in that way. You can use thread locker if you'd like. You can use blue or red, that's up to you. So at this point, before you bottom it out all the way, you wanna grab your clip, pull it back and then try to push it forward towards the steering rack. And at some point it will want to lock in. 
that's when those two ears have locked into the steering rack. So make sure you hold it there, and then with your other hand, continue to bottom out the inner tie rod. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're gonna crush these two tabs into the steering rack where they're not supposed to be. So you're gonna crush them into the wrong spot, and uh, it's basically not gonna not gonna tighten right, not gonna lock in, and you don't, you don't wanna do that. So now remove the jam nut off of here, and we'll get the uh, the tool. Now I'm sure there's a torque spec to this and I'll put it down in the description if I find it but basically I'm just gonna make it tight and uh, you don't want to make it super tight because you do have that locking clip and also you want to be careful of the steering rack. Like I said before when you're removing it you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it so just be mindful of that. But uh, again if you prefer to use torque specs I will put them down in the description for you so you can have access. All right, so just make these tight. They don't have to be crazy tight. So just put your put your tool in there, and then you want to just give it a quick snug. This is bottomed out, and it won't go any more than that, and I can see the rack twisting. So that's where I'm going to stop. There we go. All right, so now you want to take your hammer. Go in from behind. What you want to do is just hammer this here so it's folded over. I'm gonna do that because I need both hands. All right so here comes the messy part because now we're gonna take this packet of grease we're gonna open it up and well I guess it doesn't really have to be super messy but put the tie rod down in one direction and squeeze some grease onto that ball and socket joint and now what you want to do is just work it in there up and down. You just want to put it all the way around and Again, just work it in there. Make sure it's nice and lubricated so it can last a long, long time. All right. Now each tie rod should come with its own pack of grease, so you can uh, you can add a good amount in there. That way, over time, it can replenish. But do keep a little bit in the packet because what we're going to do is we're going to put it right on here where the uh, bellows boot mounts onto the tie rod, and this is going to help the boot not stick. When you go do an alignment, it's going to help your alignment specialist out. Otherwise, they're going to be living a nightmare trying to spin this tie rod and the boot's going to start spinning with it and it's it's just not fun. Before we put this bellows boot on, I took the liberty of starting a zip tie on there just so I don't have to struggle while I'm all the way in there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push it, guide it into place and it should pop on. Now once you get to the steering rack right here you want to gently guide it so it pops on there and you want to make sure it's fully bottomed out up against the rack that way no moisture can make its way in there no debris and that seems to be the spot right there. Make sure you give it a few turns so it can seat itself all the way around and now you want to just use some pliers or whatever you want to use make this zip tie super tight and then we're going to cut off the excess. So we're going to grab this zip tie with some pliers, give it a nice twist, that'll make it super tight. And now I'm going to come in and cut off this excess. As for this end right here, it has a little groove where we put the grease that it needs to sit on. Just pull it till it sits in that groove. If it's a little compressed and out of shape, it'll gain its shape back once you start uh, turning the wheel left and right. So. Uh, you can either use another zip tie here, or you can reuse your uh, original clip, whatever you prefer. I'm going to reuse my original clip. So this is mounted. Now let's move on to putting on the outer tie rod end. Alright, so at this point you want to grab your new nut, put that on. I forgot to mention this, but it's a great idea to compare your two parts, old and new, to make sure that you're dealing with the same length. In my case we are. I measured it, I just didn't show it on camera, and I forgot to mention it. So. Get your nut on a bunch of threads. Now we're going to move on to reinstalling our outer tie rod and we're going to make sure we put it on as many turns as we uh, needed to take it off. So in my case it was 19, so I'm going to go on 19 threads and hopefully it's close enough. All right, I'm at 19 threads right now. I'm not sure if this is close or not, but either way, I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to snug this up and then go ahead and place your outer tie rod into the knuckle. Next, you're going to put on your uh, castle nut Make sure it's started by hand, not cross-threaded. Again, torque specs for this are going to be in the description if you want them. Before you go off to the alignment shop, 
snug this up while you drive down the road so you can be nice and safe. All right, last but not least on this side, don't forget to line up your castle nut with the cotter pin hole, put that through, then you wanna just bend it over to lock it in. Perfect. It's got the wheel back on. All right, so turn your steering wheel back. There we go. Put your lug nuts on and we'll snug them up, bottom them out, and then we'll lower the car to the ground and torque it. All right, now that the car's on the ground, we're gonna torque it to 80 foot-pounds in a uh, cross pattern so that the wheel can seat itself properly. And always double check. All right, there you have it. Off you go to your alignment shop. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna do the other side now. You always wanna do this stuff in pairs. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.